is Ashwari Gajagar Gupe, and I am the coordinator and museum educator at the Mackinac Art Gallery at Southern New Hampshire University. Now, due to the coronavirus, we at the Mackinac Art Gallery are going to be doing a weekly series of videos exploring works of art from our collection as well as works on display. Today, we'll be looking at a work of art from our current exhibition, Prince by Nicole Eisenman. The show was curated by Debbie Diston, the director of the Mackinac Art Gallery and the works are a collection of lithographs and etchings, courtesy of Andrew Mockler, master printer and director of Jungle Press Editions, Brooklyn, New York. Now, Andrew Mockler worked with Nicole Eisman um, over the period of a year and a half from 2011 through 2012, 2013, and they produced 11 prints together. Nicole Eisman is a contemporary painter, printmaker, and sculptor with a wide body of figurative and often humorous work. Inspired by social realism and German expressionism, Eisman frequently refers to art history for her imagery, both satirizing the bourgeois as well as permeating them with pathos. In 2011, Eisman locked her paints up, as she tells it, for a period of time and explored the nature of printmaking, specifically monoprint, woodcut, etching, and lithography. She mined the collection of the Metropolitan Museum and reinterpreted some of the more famous modernist images into a contemporary tableau. Now, in this video, we'll be looking at this image right here, Tea Party, 2012. It is a two-color lithograph. We have three characters in this scene. Who are they, and what can we see about their clothing, facial expressions, and posturing? Let's start on the character on the left. So we have this character here, who is wearing a nondescript clothing. It's kind of gray, kind of swirled in with the line work you can see. He, they all are standing in a pool of water, and he has a hat on his head. Now this hat is called a tricorn hat. The tricorn style originated with Spanish soldiers in Flanders during the 17th century. Now during the 18th century, the tricorn hat would be very popular, its style worn by almost everyone, both aristocrat and common man. In the middle here, you have a man whose style might be a little bit more familiar, um, look at his protruding belly, his suit, and his bare head. Um, this style is depicting the capitalist, uber-rich businessman, also known as the fat cat, and which is a uh, imagery icon straight out of early 20th century politics. And then finally, to the very right of the image, you have what is clearly a skeleton. Um, the line work around the skeleton is really dark and strong, and they all in the middle are holding an American flag, which is part pole, or part American flag, part scythe. Um, and at the very top of the image, you see a pineapple. Now, focusing on that pineapple a little bit. In colonial America, um, the pineapple was a traditional symbol of hospitality. Due to its association of warmth and friendliness, um, pineapples in America were often used as the crowning piece for large displays of food. The symbol of the pineapple was also used frequently in any 18th and 19th centuries, um, decorative bed posts, tablecloths, napkins, and anything associated in general with welcoming guests. Now, what else can we see in this image? You see their ears. Let's focus on this 18th century revolutionary, the man with the tricorn hat. You see his ear here is cinched. It's kind of closed shut. The revolutionary sports an anus-shaped ear, while the businessman's over here is shut with a literal pin. So what could this mean? The ears are pinned shut. Maybe it suggests that they both are impervious to outside influence unwilling to listen to anybody else's thoughts or to reason. And then here they are in a deal with death. You have this murky background as well, which is um, created by sponging the water of the surface of the stone and drawing through it with greasy ink. It pretends an ill, kind of gloomy outcome. So. Nicole Eisenman tends to steer clear of popular politics in her work, uh, preferring to address the, board, the broader foibles of humanity. The moody sky, the background, um, the expression of the characters, and the ears pinned shut all shows a clear political message. 
Um, the top 1%, according to Eisman, can only met, be met with a swift demise. Tea Party articulates, articulates Eisman's political orientation as the artist reproduces not only this particular trio of figures in her work in various mediums, but also the form of the print itself. It is both a commentary on and a portrait of the conservative political movement of the same name that emerged in the early 2009 during President Barack Obama's first term in office. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this and please stay safe and join us again for another week of Machinish from Home.